Welcome back, Stats23 here, back again with some knife therapy, and today I bring you the Spyderco Stovepipe. This is a design collaboration with custom knife maker David Riddenbaum, inspired from his custom Build the Butcher design, and this design brought me back way back from whenever I first started watching knife content on YouTube. This was uh, a maker that was all the hype, and uh, the this Custom was way too much out of my reach at that time. So it was really nice to see Spyderco bring it to us in a production form. Uh, let's get some specs out of the way so you have an idea of the size of the knife. You have a six and three quarter inch overall length. You have a blade length of uh, 2.87 inches. You have a grip area from right here all the way to the back over here of 3.96 inches. And you have a pretty wide uh, closed length from this point right here all the way to the back of 1.78 inches. Pretty chunky blade stock thickness of uh, 0.157. And the behind the edge thickness on my particular knife ranges from 23 thousandths at the thinnest and then it goes up to 25 thousandths. And mine was sharpened at 16 degrees per side. All right, let's take a closer look at this. You have this nice dark stone washed uh, blasted blade here. Uh, cleaver shaped and it, it kind of reminds me of like a rhino horn there. The blade steel on this is CPM 20 CV, a, a high edge retention, a high corrosion steel, one of those upper echelon steels. The knife has a pretty deep hollow grind on there. However, as you can see, it doesn't go up that high. So um, it's, it's not going to get as thin as I would like it. I like the way they did this, where they kind of uh, put a forward chawl right here that included a sharpening notch, as you can see right there. Clears that plunge line uh, just by a hair, uh, so it may widen up on you after a couple of sharpenings. Um, this nice little scoop right here is a nice comfortable spot to put the thumb and uh, was my go-to spot whenever I was holding it in the saber grip for sure. You have a nice pokey pointy point right there. Excellent for doing this type of cut in that pinch grip with your finger right here, doing those drag cuts um, and some of the testing that I'm sure will probably be showing here soon. Uh, you can see me doing those type of cutting with it where you're putting that tip down and just pulling through. <clears throat> Being that it is a worn, like a worn cliff style uh, edge, that what I mean by that, just a straight edge down there, it's not going to be great uh, for cutting stuff on a cutting board. Um, you can get it done, but you're going to be pointing up because your knuckles are going to hit because none of that edge is going to touch. So you're going to have to point your hand up like that, and you, you're only going to use this, you know, front portion of the knife. To cut into it before your hands hit that cutting board. Not something that I do a whole lot. I usually, type of cutting I usually do on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm holding it in my hand like this, like in the testing and, you know, doing slicing motions, which worn cliff blades work great for that. You know, if you break down a lot of cardboard, you know, that nice straight edge, it's going to stay into the cut. It's not going to want to slide out, you know, like on a, you know, big belly knife. When you're into that cut like this and your natural hand movement is pulling out like this well when that belly swoops up it's going to slide right out of that cut so this this uh is excellent for you know like i said power cuts you know holding something in the hand pushing down or um if you do want to use uh like a cutting board just that forward portion <clears throat> the knife came to me very very sharp uh, Spider Co. always, you, I mean, for the most part, I've always seemed to get knives from them extremely uh, sharp, pretty much always uh, hair shading at least. You have uh, Ridden Bomb's uh, Maker's Mark right there. It looks like um, a deer or something, skeleton antlers. This is a Tai Chung Taiwan produced uh, Spider Co. They usually do an outstanding dot job, the same. Uh, factory that did the uh, Schleese buoy, which is a highly coveted knife in the community uh, for good reason. You don't have jipping per se, but you do have this one little 
I guess you'd call that a jump. Little nub right there in this little milled out section. It's mainly for aesthetics because it doesn't it doesn't offer any grip. However, I <laughs> I did not find myself at all cutting like this with the knife. Uh, if I was gonna be putting thumb placement down, it was in this little scoop right there. And that is the perfect uh, grip for me anyway, the most comfortable also. The blade steel they chose to use for the knife is uh, CPM 20 CV, which is pretty much the same as M390204P. Uh, and it's one of those high edge retention, um, high, high corrosion resistance steels that performs pretty darn nicely. Um, and this one definitely has a proper heat treated on it because it kept its uh, sharp edge all the way till I got to the last part of the testing because I was still push cutting majority of that stuff like the sisal rope. I forgot, I think I did 40 cuts with it and I was push cutting all that with just this little bitty portion up here in the front. And um, it it was still sharp after the last test, just wasn't push cutting like it was in the beginning, um, which I don't see that often. You know, a lot of a lot of uh, factory edges don't last. You know, don't stay that sharp all the way to the end. It's just how it usually goes. But however, most of the time, once you sharpen this up once or twice, your edge retention usually jumps up a good bit because you get any of the fatigue steel that may be on there from, you know, them sharpening it on a uh, belt grinder or power stropping it or however they put the edges on. Once I was done with all the cutting, I was able to hit it up on my leather strop with one micron uh, gunny juice, diamond gunny juice on there and I uh, brought the edge back to hair shaving sharp. And uh, that's always a nice thing to see. Now let's move on to the action. As you can see, you have the ginormous spidey hole there. So it's very easy to get to and you can access it from the right side very easily and the left side very easily as well. Um, I can spidey flick it. It's not, it's not the uh, most natural feeling spidey flick, but I can do it. I can thumb flick it as well. Uh, can I thumb flick it left-handed? I can thumb flick it. I don't think I can spidey flick it. I just don't have enough up. Oh, yes, I can. Boy, look at that. Uh, very, very smooth action. Uh, it's riding on phosphor bronze washers. And tai Chung, the tai Chung factory really knows how to make a good, smooth uh, titanium frame lock that's on washers. Because, I mean, my Bowie, my, my Spyderco sleeves Bowie is super smooth. And this one is right up there with it in the smoothness department. Something that I love. I love that feeling when I give it a nice slow roll and it feels like it's like, you know, butter sliding down glass or something. I don't know. <laughs> Along with the smoothness from the phosphor bronze washers, you also have a ceramic detent ball, which uh, is a big help because this lock bar is putting pressure on this blade uh to lock open so whenever the blade goes past i mean going back to the detent hole it that ceramic ball glides much better than a stainless ball onto steel all right let's close it up and take a look at the handle um we have a torx t10 for the pivot nice decorative pivot with a pivot collar going around there i'm not sure if that's aluminum or titanium but it, it looks good either way i like that pivot it's like spokes almost. And then you have a T8 on the body screw right here. You have that same dark blasted stonewash finish that you do on the blade on the scales. And I think they match up well. You, this one may be a little bit lighter now because I've been testing it. Uh, the scales are completely contoured, very nicely done, nice and softened going all the way around. Uh, you have a bunch, I mean a bunch of milling on this entire knife. I mean, just look around, you got this, you got this little thing, you got this hole that they're gonna mill out. You have this up here, this, this right here, all these extra little grooves, that right here, and it's all, you know, mimicked on the other side. So there's an inside here, here, lots of milling. So, you know, that's, 
I'm sure part of the price tag uh, that we'll get to toward the end. And let's see what else. Uh, let's flip it over. You you have that same decorative pivot on the lock side with the the pivot collar, but that pivot collar uh, also acts as an over travel. As you can see, it sticks down right here, so that keeps you from overextending this titanium lock bar in that direction, which could over uh, unspring your your lock and not allow it to close uh, to lock up anymore. So that's always something nice to see on a titanium frame lock. Uh, the pocket clip is a 3D milled uh, pocket clip, titanium pocket clip with the Spyderco logo there. It's a little boring in my opinion. It just looks like a slight chunk of, looks like they just grabbed a piece that they cut off uh, from like a scrap side and they just put it on here, drill some holes on it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It, it functions well, but it just, it doesn't look that great. Um, you do have a T8 up here and a T6. I'm not sure why they did that, I guess, because they had these little indentions and they couldn't make it any wider. I, I don't really know there. The pocket clip goes in and out of my pocket uh, nicely, but like I said, you can see how much room it's going to take up in the pocket. It, that doesn't bother me any because I don't carry anything else in this pocket, so not doesn't matter. You do have a good bit of the knife sticking up out of the pocket. It holds it in there nicely, but as you can see right here, it goes all the way to here. You can get your hand in there and you can put something, but it's going to take up you, uh, probably about half the pocket. Uh, you got something to hold on to to pull it out of the pocket. And uh, it's not heavy by any means, but let's take a look at the weight. First off, in grams, we have uh, 136.6 grams and 4.8 ounces, which is, is perfectly doable for me, but... Um, if that's too heavy for you, then I'd probably go with another knife. All right, now let's check out the lockup. Uh, it's sitting at, I'd say, around 60%. Um, there is no stainless steel lock insert uh, to contact uh, the, the tang of the knife. However, it does have a uh, carburized, not carburized, carburized, which means they heat treated the lock face. Kind of like uh, Chris Reeve does on the Savenza 21s that he used to do and the Menundis. Um, there's absolutely no stick and um, it hasn't traveled any further than that after all the testing and use I've done with it so far. So I, I've never experienced any of them traveling all the way over unless they, there was an issue you know, beforehand. The lockup is, when I say rock solid, I cannot, I cannot muster any side to side, any up and down whatsoever. Very nice to see. It's like a bank vault, a um, little heavy user there. The access to that lock bar is good because they have this little cutout right there. As you can see, you can get to that lock bar and they have this little chamfered out spot. So it's very easy and comfortable to get my thumb in there. The lock bar pressure is just right. It's not overly strong. It's not too soft either. The centering is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, there is no internal milling. And you don't usually see any internal milling whenever you have uh, completely contoured scales. Because uh, that, you know, that's removing a good bit of titanium. Uh, you do have a titanium backspacer that has been inset for some odd reason in down here. So as you can see, you have a lip right there. It does a good job of collecting pocket lint and stuff. I, that's something I it really bugs me. You can see it there better. All right, let's talk about ergonomics. Because I know that's a topic that many people discussed when reviewing this knife. However, I expected it to be painful to use this knife cutting anything you know from what people said i was like definitely definitely gonna hurt my hands um and i will say when i first picked this up my initial thought was it it, it was gonna be uncomfortable in use because you know it, it's got some very you know pointy spots one two three four you know five six seven it, it's got a bunch of pokey spots that you know would would probably have been better without having them there but they're here, and uh, so we went along with the testing. Um, I knew it, it, it had some potential because it has contoured scales, 
and that little curvature that, that I like so much. And I found that whenever I'm all the way up on the knife in the saber grip with my thumb up here, very, it's, it's probably the most comfortable in this spot. In the hammer grip, same goes all the way up there. Um, these two fingers for my hands fit perfectly right there. These go right here. And then this little indention, that, that finger goes right there. Um, the only time that I was cutting and I had to like stop what I was doing and adjust was at the very end of the wood shaving. I, I don't know if you'll be able to see me or not because I kind of sped that part, the whole, that section up. Um, I was, I kept doing like that. Well, it's because when I was pushing this corner right here and that corner, depending on where I was at on the knife, and mainly this one right here, that pokey spot was digging into my finger. Now, I was putting a lot of pressure into it. I was trying to cut through the stick. And, um, you know, a lot of knives don't usually do that well once I put, get into that much uh, force into it. So is that a huge deal for me? No, it wasn't that bad. Um, now, would, would it would have been nicer for them to smooth down these humps right there or not put all these extra choils? Well, yeah, it would. But I'm sure this is indicative of his actual custom design. And uh, at, at the time he designed this, that was the, the craze. Seems that cleaver blades have came back into style anyway, because it seems like everybody's making a cleaver nowadays. All right, some quick size comparisons. We have the Ontario Rat Model 1, Rat Model 2, Spyderco Sage 5, Benchmade Bug Out. We have the Quiet Carry Drift and the Savenza 31, small. All right, nitpicks and complaints. Uh, of course, I would have loved to see them bring this hollow grind up some. I know they were, you know, not wanting to come into the hole uh or make this a little deeper to bring this a uh, little thinner i say that because if you go up three sixteenths of an inch which is you know about i don't know right around where my fingernails point right there um you get to forty thousands you know that is uh you know it's not gonna cut it's it's like an axe it's not gonna cut well at all I promise you uh so it'd been nice to see that thinned out and I said this a little while ago, this backspacer being inset like that just completely throws me off. It collects junk in there. I just don't understand why they did that. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's a purpose for that, but I don't like that. And, um, of course, I would have loved to see him soften all these points or, you know, not even have all these extra, you know, choil or whatever you want to call them in there. Just soften those down. Even this line right here is a hard angle right here and right there. Uh, you don't really feel those and use those, so I'm not really worried about those. And last, this is just a very minor thing, but uh, the two different size pocket clip screws and the clip itself just looks a little funky. Uh, but other than that, you know... I can handle the the ergos are, are good enough for me and I like the overall aesthetics. That's me. I know it's a love it or hate it design. Um, and I guess in the nitpicks complaints, I could put the price tag, which I didn't mention before. It, it's an it's expensive knife. It's a $420 knife. Do I think it's worth it? Like I say in all the other videos that I talk about this, anytime you go over that $100 price point, I can tell you if I like it, and you got to decide if you want to spend your hard-earned money. Is it a well-made knife? Yes. Um, if if it, none of those nitpicks complaints I talked about are deal breakers for you, and you love the design, I'd say go ahead and get it. It's it's a very well-made knife, very good, smooth action. Um, you know, it's not the thinnest slicer, but you know, it, it it's. It's uh, more than adequate. You can see it did all my tests it's just fine. So there you go. That is the Spyderco stovepipe. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day, and I will see y'all on the next one.